Welcome to the Lexington Public Library's Tales from the Kentucky Room podcast, where we discuss everything Lexington and Fayette County history. I'm Miriam, and in each episode of this podcast, we will feature a guest that will share a piece of local history. So thank you for tuning in and enjoy. My first job as a teenager was a page at the Lexington Public Library. It was 1994. Well, on one of my weekly visits to the public library, I found out that they were hiring for a page position at the new Eagle Creek branch. I absolutely loved that job because of its comfort and ease with which I fit right in. But most of all, it was the staff that made this little Muslim Arab American girl feel welcomed and valued. At the time, I worked mostly in the children's area, and occasionally I would go help in adult services where my favorite librarian was. Shh, don't tell my coworkers. Some of them are still around here. Her name is Ruth Gaylord. Her smile said it all. You are welcome here, and I'm ready to help you in any way I can. There were no strangers for Ruth. Everyone that walked into the library's doors knew that they could go to her for help with finding a book, using reference resources, or just to chat about the newest addition to the family. I would find out much later that Ruth was the Lexington Public Library's first African-American librarian. In 2006, the University of Kentucky awarded her the Lyman T. Johnson Torch of Excellence Award. She influenced and inspired so many. For that reason, we wanted to have her on the podcast, and we are so glad she agreed to sit down with us. Welcome, Ruth. Thank you for coming, Ruth. We're glad to have you. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, Ruth? I know you're from Richmond, Kentucky, right? Correct. So tell us a little bit about Ruth Gaylord, the the little girl from Richmond. Okay, (laughs) Ruth Gaylord. Grew up in Richmond, Kentucky. Have a had a brother. He just died recently. So there were two of us. He was the oldest. And Richmond growing up, we were well protected by both parents. Uh Dad worked. He was a typesetter at the Richmond Daily Register paper. And this was about what year? Maybe we're talking about back in the 40s and everything growing up. And Mom was always home with us. He was the typesetter, and he was the one out all the time working. They were very strict. Nothing, you know, like we were never any place without Mom and Dad. So, and in the church. In the church. And he was a, they were big church workers also. But growing up in Richmond, Everyone went to one school, mm-hmm. like the blacks. We were at the Richmond High School. The elementary school mm-hmm. was also there. Okay. And so everyone that was African-American or black, whichever we want to put it, we all attended that school. Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. segregated yeah. schools. and mm-hmm. yeah. So now that school is torn down. Okay. It was just rec- It wasn't too long ago where it was torn down and replaced. Mm-hmm. There's a Y there. Mm-hmm. And they're supposed to be building some kind of athletic field for people. Mm-hmm. But we lived on the street where the school was, mm-hmm. so we could walk to it. Other people had to walk maybe a distance. Yeah. People who lived in the rural areas were bust in, mm-hmm. uh, and that's yeah. how we got to see them. How, when did you come to Lexington? Lexington, fiscally, maybe, oh, let's see. Let me see. Went to Berea College first, 56. Oh, Berea when College. When I graduated. Okay. Yeah. And then... Did you like some, your time at Berea? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> 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 it, it was just different because um, I think we, the blacks were, you know, the time I went, mm-hmm. we were allowed back to the college. I think at a point, Rear College wouldn't allow anybody to come. There was a point, I don't know the history of it, but there was a point where we couldn't go there and then it opened up again. So it became segregated uh-huh. at one it was point like, and then uh-huh. it opened up again? That okay. was like years before me and okay. my brother. So we were in the 50s. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Okay. And so you were kind of dealing with a little bit of that. Of course, and, yeah. and when I got there in 56, mm-hmm. you know, with roommates and everything, there was still a little <laughs> bit of Prejudice right. going on. Of course. Uh-huh. Especially roommates. If you get the, you know, roommates didn't want a room with me if they were white. or And then some of the blacks didn't want to be with me either. So I don't know what that was all about. Yeah. Everybody just had their own opinions. <laughs> <laughs> but it was something. Yeah. I mean, it was a rough time for African uh-huh. Americans. Of course, mm-hmm. the, the civil rights movement was gearing up. And it was, you know, there was a lot of segregation going on, mm-hmm. a lot of discrimination. So mm-hmm. I'm sure it was a, a hard time. Mm-hmm. For you, so after Berea, where did after you go? After Berea, 
And when I graduated mm-hmm. in 62, mm-hmm. I had met my husband and we got married. He was a minister. Okay. And so at that's when we started moving, going to churches, oh, okay. where he pastored churches. Oh, okay. So uh-huh. did you guys move around a lot in Kentucky? Right. Not so much Kentucky because we left Kentucky. First place was Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, okay. And then North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And then the last place was Youngstown, Ohio. Okay. And then that's when we moved back to Lexington in 77. Okay. Then moved you, to Lexington. of course, started your family and, right. and the rest was. That, the family started like, let me see, I'm trying to remember my age. <laughs> 63 was mm. the first one. Yeah. That was before that we got married, 62, mm. first baby born, 63. Okay. And then we moved to Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Was it hard for you to move around a lot with the children? I really didn't think about it because I was younger. Mm-hmm. And you just did it. <laughs> yeah. You know, with the man you like, yeah. you love. Yeah. So moving wasn't any problem. Okay. So, right. it, and then uh, after that, was son was born in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And then another daughter that was in Youngstown. And then the baby daughter, Youngstown. Mm-hmm. So Youngstown was the last place. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. And then you moved to Lexington. Mm-hmm. So how did you become involved with librarianship? Is that something that you worked with as soon as you got out of college? Never, and that's the point, never, ever thought of being a librarian. Really? Never, ever did we hear the word library. Even in school, mm-hmm. there was a library that we used, I think it was a study hall. Like mm-hmm. if we were taking a break, we would go to the study hall. But mm-hmm. there were books there, mm-hmm. but to say that we're going to the library, didn't never. grow up going to libraries. and um. Never mentioned. And then there was supposed to be a little house in Richmond mm-hmm. that was supposed to be a library, but we weren't allowed. The blacks weren't allowed to go. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But it's, it was on West Main Street in Richmond. Was that considered the public library there? I guess. <laughs> I, I said I'm going to ask Ruthie Mass one uh-huh. when, when I get a chance <laughs> because I'm the only, you know, I yeah. talk about it, and I think I've had one person talk about the house. Mm-hmm. But as far I'm going to see if she knows something about yeah. that. But I know that we weren't allowed to go. Yeah. It was like. Yeah, because unfortunately no. some libraries or most libraries actually were segregated as well. The only way I learned to library when I went to Bear College and not have to do research. Mm-hmm. And I taught myself you taught how, yourself? To use, mm-hmm. how to go or ask questions mm-hmm. about how to use it. But still, I'm not thinking about the library. Yeah. I'm not thinking, even though people there were calling themselves majoring in the library, I never would, never thought about it. Yeah. Never yeah. thought about so it. So, did you work while you, when you had your children, or did you, were you a stay at home mom? I, I, I was a part time worker. Part time? Uh huh. Okay. Mostly I did the part time when we lived in Youngstown. Okay. And that was with the Catholic Service League. Oh, okay. We worked in daycares. Oh, okay. Uh huh. All right. And then after moving to Lexington, did you work here at all at the library or at that time? I guess back to the the Youngstown Mm -hmm. where I was the manager of a daycare center. Mm -hmm. A bookmobile pulled up Uh and the children knew about it, but I didn't. And I thought, a bookmobile, you know, and I went on and looked around and liked it. Uh And I thought, that would be kind of nice, mm-hmm. you know, first time. So when we moved to Lexington, mm-hmm. a bookmobile position was open, and I applied for it. For the, like, at the Lexington uh-huh. Public Library. So mm-hmm. I was on the bookmobile from 77 to 1984. And this mo- bookmobile, how did it service the community? What was um, the purpose of it? In the city mm-hmm. and, and usually um, community places, but it was mainly inner city, and I think everybody was free to go like into the projects. Mm-hmm. And so the person that left that position, and I came and applied for it and got it. So was this like a part-time position? No, it was full-time, full-time with the Lexington okay. Public Library. Uh-huh. And then you would take this this car into the inner city? Uh-huh. And, it, was and a big, it was a big, huge, it was one of those uh, gherkin sloggers, I think they <laughs> called it. It was one of those big, huge, heavy. Yeah, like an RV type. Yeah, mm-hmm. even it might be heavier than that. Yeah. Uh huh. And and the thing about it, it was kind of broken down when I got it, so <laughs> I kind of got it running again. Were you driving the, it? Right? I wasn't. I couldn't <laughs> drive it. No, it, I think it was stick shift. Oh my goodness! And I'd have bookmobile drivers. Oh okay. So we were hard bookmobile, yeah. but we got it running again. We got it running, cleaned up, and everything, and we'd go out. 
to like what we call inner city. Yeah, that was open and to you the would project. have the people come onto uh-huh. the onto people the would come on. vehicle. Uh-huh. And, okay. mm-hmm. There uh, are pictures somewhere of that. Oh, I'm right? sure we have pictures uh-huh. somewhere in all in our clothes tags. Yes, uh-huh. <laughs> but keeping drivers that was the main thing, and and of course. You would go through the thing of different kind of drivers. Yeah, yes, yes. That's That would be difficult to, to keep that staffed, huh? But, but being on the bookmobile is when I, I would get all these questions about mm-hmm. books. And like readers, advisory to, kind of uh-huh, questions. And then that's when I decided to go to library school. Okay. And that was 1979 when I started. Okay. Because, I, you know, I had people at the library. Now, I did have people who cared about me that would give me hints and mm-hmm. that sort of thing to help me get through it. But yeah. so, I was able to do what I needed to do. Yeah. And so you were helping basically customers on that vehicle on your own. Right. right. Um, were you the only lab- staff person mm-hmm. on and I them? wasn't a librarian. They ca- I was a library assistant yeah. is what they, yeah. they named me. But there was there was nobody else to sort of give you that camaraderie no. there on that vehicle. So if you had a question, you wouldn't be able to consult anybody. <laughs> so that must have been difficult. Yeah. It was. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys get a lot of customers on there, or a lot yes. of people come? Yes. Yeah. You know, once we got out there, we yeah. did, and yeah. I would get all these questions. You know, like people were doing the GEDs, mm-hmm. getting the GEDs, and then you know I go buy the books. I had my budget came from, I think it was Kentucky Department of. Frankfurt mm-hmm. of Education or the uh, the, Kentucky, the libraries library. and ar- libraries and archives. Uh-huh, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh. so they would fund this uh-huh, bookmobile. They, I, my fund just came from them, yeah. and you would provide all kinds of services, not uh-huh. just not just books to check out. So, right. like you said, I um, could just go buy GED and right yeah. whatever they and nobody needed, I could yeah. go get it. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. So you said you were inspired to go back to school only your... because I was on there, and, and some of the questions I couldn't answer, uh-huh. and I. I said, I have to go to library school to know. And that's yeah. the reason that I went to library school. Yeah. Who did you provide services for now? And you said inner city, so I'm assuming. Uh-huh. It was kind of a mix, but it was mainly African-American. Mm-hmm. And then there was a, I can think of the name of it, where children were. And there was one place where there were pregnant mothers that mm-hmm. I went to, but oh, I can't okay. even think of the name of it. What, the Florence Crittenden? Yeah, that was one of So I had a list of places. That was one. Yeah. And there was another place with children, but I can't think of the name. It's been so long. Yeah. Wow. I'm sure you went to a lot of places. It's hard to remember yeah, all had, those places. Much, So it was mostly inside of Lexington within right, the city, within right, the city urban right. limits. Okay. There's a Davistown place in at the room we're going to. I don't even know if that exists, but there were all these little communities like Davistown and Carver Center and Florence Crittenden. And That's a lot of places. <laughs> uh-huh. And yeah. then there were some churches I went yeah. to. And this was five days a week? Through the week. I'd have different days for each one. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. okay. have to keep account of it. So you decided to enroll into library, library school, school at University of Kentucky? Yeah. Was it easy to get into that school at the time? or I was considered a non-traditional student, mm-hmm. and I did go to a workshop one time before I even started. I went to a workshop for non-traditional. Mm-hmm. People like me who were older had been out of school a long time, and then I was encouraged, and so I looked into it. Yeah. Back in those days, though, mm-hmm. it was like hands-on with the professors, Yeah, which I like. Now, I don't know if I want to be there with the online. Oh, you know, everything is people. online now. Apparently, the library school, like, you know, I mean, when I went, when I went, I would be considered, I was considered a non-traditional, you know, I wasn't older. I was, you know, I had children. I was mostly like night school. Mm-hmm. But um, the majority of the classes were online. Mm-hmm. So I can't imagine... I mean, you would have to go in person, of course, at that right. time when you went. So, And when I went, we How had to you? dial, like, you pick up, like, there was a telephone where the computers were. You had to pick it up like you're dialing. We would dial somewhere, and then they would hook us up to computers. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. It was like. What year was this? Oh, gosh. I started 79. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So that would be 79 up to 84 mm-hmm. when I graduated. Wow. That's incredible. But I can remember dialing, you know, and uh-huh. running to study. So while the children were home, I would be at the library at night, mm-hmm. you know, like to get my. How did you balance all that with with the children and 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 the working and the yeah? Probably tough on them, like my, <laughs> <laughs> like my parents were yeah. on us, because it was like you can't go out, yeah. you, you know, until I get home mm-hmm. or. And then they would be in at night when I would go to the library, and they weren't allowed to leave. Mm-hmm. I'd go outside the door. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to, I guess, when you're <laughs> when you're. And then home. with four of them, when there were school mm-hmm. activities, I'd have to divide it up. Maybe this this month I would go to the one school with mm-hmm. one, and then the next month go with the other one. Yeah. So I could never be at both all of them at the same time. Yeah, that would be that would be too hard. So at this time, your husband was working, or how did he support uh, he, you? He would be pastoring the church, mm-hmm. and he had a church in Midway. Oh, okay. And, th- and then when he started getting sick, that was a that was a whole different. Oh, thing. okay. I had read that your husband became terminally ill, and you were taking care of him. Was this at the same time that you were going to school? Right. Oh, wow. So right. you were going to school, uh-huh. taking care of an ill right. spouse, and, and working then, full-time? Right. We had to come up with a plan, though, if he got sick, because mm-hmm. his was sort of like rushed to the hospital, mm-hmm. what to do. Yeah. So we hooked up with the fire station down the street, mm-hmm. and we had a, like a— An emergency line. Kind like of. A, a word that like the kids could call mm-hmm. if something happened, and I wasn't happened not to be there. Yeah. And then they, they knew to come and help. Yeah. You know, like get him to the hospital. Yeah. How long did he survive? Till 81. Until 81. And so this is while you were in, still in school, before yeah. you graduated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's when I was trying to decide whether to stay there. I quit. Mm-hmm. But I was so near finished. Mm-hmm. It would have been a shame to stop. <laughs> yeah. That I just decided to stay in it. Well, I can see how you got your grit to, <laughs> to continue. <laughs> and I mean, that's incredible. So you graduated from the library school at UK. Mm-hmm. What was that like? That was really, like I said, the hands-on people. I can, can remember some Larry Allen. He's gone. and But there were, there were just people that would care because mm-hmm. I was in one class, in a cataloging class, when I got the news that my husband had been rushed to the hospital. Mm-hmm. But everybody understood that he was sick. Yeah. And so when the call came in, they would, you know, let me know, and then yeah. I could just leave the class and go. So you go had on. support of uh, professors? Mm-hmm. I had and support. Good. And faculty support. Good. Right. So at this time, was UK diverse, or were you the only African-American woman? The only one that I can I don't remember anybody else being yeah. there with me. Uh-huh. Yeah. When I was going through library school, uh-huh. I was the only Muslim girl there. So it was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you notice when you're different from people. But that, there's also a sense of pride, though, when you when you graduate, right? Now, they did. They let me carry, you know the name for that, with the College of Library Science name on it. Oh, yes, the, the sign. I forgot what it is. The mar- I, not a marquee. About my but, pictures. Um, but they... They called for me to do that. Oh, cool. Uh-huh. Oh, so everybody good. was really, you know, library yeah. school. Is so you had a, did you have a good time at, at, at the school? Did you have, you had a good experience? Mm-hmm. Good. It was a good experience because I was in and out. Really, I was there at night, so yeah. you were just there with the students there. And then you graduated, and did you get a position with the public library here right, right away? Or did you right. have to wait? Or What I had to do was come in mm-hmm. from the bookmobile. But I was told that back then there were men over the library. But mm-hmm. I was taking one course a semester, mm-hmm. and that went from 79 up, and it was beginning to, like, 1983. And then I was told that I would have to finish. If I didn't finish mm-hmm. and didn't pass the exam, then the bookmobile would eventually close, and I wouldn't have a job with the library. So oh, no. I was told that. I was mm-hmm. told that I had to finish. Mm-hmm. So that was some more pressure on me. Oh. They had said I had to finish, so then I discussed with some of the professors about what I could take at that mm-hmm. time, yeah. and I finished in time. Yeah, but why would they close the bookmobile if you didn't finish? I mean, is it because of the staffing situation or funding? What happened with that old bookmobile that I was on? Mm-hmm. It was getting so old and causing a lot of money to keep the generator and everything going. So that I was supposed to get a new bookmobile, mm-hmm. but everybody fought that. Mm-hmm. But what happened, I knew some people at the Department of the Kentucky Department of Libraries, and I called, made the call, mm-hmm. and they saw that I got. Nobody really understood how I could get the new bookmobile in. Mm-hmm. But I, I called one of my you, buddies. You called some people. I called my <laughs> buddies, and I got the new bookmobile in. So Yay, I was Ruth. on the— <laughs> Good for you. But I was told that if I didn't pass the test, that there wouldn't be a position for me. Mm, yeah. mm-hmm. well, but I got the, the you, course, yeah. and I passed the test. And you got the bookmobile. I got the— <laughs> You did it. And I got the promotion. I had—look, I did find my letter— 
You got your letter. You still have it? Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, I love it. And you got promoted to librarian. Wow. This letter is to inform you of your promotion to librarian one, effective July 23rd, 1984. Wow. Uh, Donald Shabel? Shabel was the assistant director. Did you at the time. remember him? No, he's, I've he's never still heard. around. Is he? Okay. Uh huh. He was the assistant. He was assistant director. The assistant director at the time. Well, congratulations. You became the librarian. <laughs> Were you still on the bookmobile afterwards, or did you? No, I came on in, and then another person went on the bookmobile. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Which location did you start at? I was at Northside. At Northside, uh-huh. yeah, at the old location. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Now, the bookmobile did start out. They don't call that name in Black and Williams Community Center. I don't know if you've heard uh, that. Yes, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. that's where we were when I first started, oh, okay. Black and Williams Community Center. Mm-hmm. And that's where the bookmobile would be out. Would time. be housed, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you started as a librarian at Northside. What was that What was that like? What was that well, experience? First, when I majored, I majored like children's librarian. I was oh. a children's librarian for a while. Mm-hmm. And then my the manager I had at that time, I think it went back like a year or so. She mm-hmm. said that she thought it was hard on me having children at home, husband dead, and that working with children was kind of difficult, mm-hmm. that I would probably work better with adults. Okay. So she told me to, to ask to be signed to adult services. Okay. So I don't Were know. Were you happy about that or? It was a challenge. And yeah. I said, okay, you know, mm-hmm. okay. and But I don't know whether that I, that's where I didn't want <laughs> I don't know whether that was a thing. If you go to adult service, then you won't be able to make it. Mm-hmm. But I did. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, it was a lot of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot of like um, management issues or whatever. Yeah, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What was librarianship like back then? They they like, would be the, the, you know, servicing the patrons mm-hmm. and programming, mm-hmm. supervising. Yeah. So reference, was, yeah, was programming uh, as big a deal as it was as it is today back then, or uh, like story time? I really and, yeah, like that's with children's story time and all, but I can't remember too much about. I guess it was in the days. Can't remember too much about children, mm-hmm. but once I got to adults, mm-hmm. I was really busy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I'm sure that you got a lot of reference uh-huh. type services. Mm-hmm. Where did you go after Northside? North side was the Eastland, and there was a little storefront in mm-hmm. the Eastland Shopping Center. The Eastland Shopping Center. Uh-huh. Yeah. But between there, with the there were certain things going on at North Side. Mm-hmm. So I went to Central first, oh, okay. and then I had to work there for a while, mm-hmm. and then went to Eastland. And then from then on, wherever they moved, I would move with oh, them. Okay. Uh-huh. When you were hired by Lexington Public Library, you were the first African American to be hired by this organization. But I didn't know that. You didn't know that. Nah, but I didn't know a thing about that until I graduated. And I was looking. When did I know that I was the only black librarian? And that was when. <laughs> so you never like you never realized <laughs> until they wrote me up when I graduated, uh-huh. and then that's when I saw it. That, yeah. Because I was turning around. When, when did I become? That was in yeah. this. So I to you, to you, that, that wasn't like a label that you kind of yeah. put on yourself. You were just a librarian. Uh huh. Whoever yeah. did that in public oh, wow. relations, I didn't know it. Wow. So you were featured in the library's mm-hmm. newsletter uh-huh. profile on Ruth Gaylord. Wow. So they did like a little profile on you. Mm -hmm. Ruth joined the Lexington Public Library staff in 1977, and her first assignment was the Outreach Inner City Bookmobile Program. She had previous experience working with preschoolers in Youngstown, Ohio. Working with the Lexington Public Library's Bookmobile Service sparked her desire to pursue a career as a librarian. Wow. And then here they mention, you know, that you graduated from Berea College and then you went to library school. Mm -hmm. So now children's librarian at the Northside Branch, she does miss the bookmobile work. That's incredible. You were awarded five scholarships mm-hmm. toward your library science school. That's amazing. So I I actually, first time I met you was at when Eagle Creek opened. I was a 16-year-old page. Yeah, at the time, I think you were a librarian. Mm-hmm. What were some of the struggles that you faced working in the library, whether that's like balancing your work life or struggles with servicing a customer base that can sometimes be difficult? I guess supervising the staff and um, this is different. 
there were difficulties, really difficulties there that I had to learn how to handle yeah. uh-huh, without getting angry, <laughs> uh, not being pushy, not taking care and be sure that everybody was treated fairly. Because the, the time we started, it was like certain people thought, like on the weekends, or Christmas and the holidays, they would think that they had been there longer, so mm. they were the ones that could only go away at the Christmas time mm. or really nice holidays. Yeah. So I had to work at switching around so we rotate mm-hmm. so other people could get off time. Yeah. So you, you know? had a lot of time to learn some management skills, yeah. some supervisory skills, and be, be able to satisfy all the staff. And Definitely. <laughs> and, yeah. and people weren't getting along, so... Mm. It was a thing of getting everybody to work together. Yeah. I think teamwork. a lot of people, yeah, teamwork. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that part of librarianship is also a business management mm-hmm. uh, skills. So you do have to learn to manage your staff and and be able to appease and mentor other mm-hmm. other staff people. What were some of your proudest accomplishments, whether that's at the Lexington Public Library or other? I guess being able to overcome the little struggles, the main thing, yeah. surviving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and making people happy yeah. and making people work together. Mm-hmm. And I had even patrons, you know, there were some of them that were really mm-hmm. not really nice. But I had to just go in and just, my thing was, not, I'm not going to get angry. I'm just going to handle it. And when they're nasty to me, I'm going to be extremely nice to them, you know, regardless. Yeah. Regardless. So. Yeah. That's just a skill that you learn working uh-huh. with the public, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, I met you back in 94. At that time, the librarianship was trying to provide a lot of technology services for the community, and computers were becoming more and more mainstream. Right. And we were trying to ensure that you know people had equal access to these right. to this sort of technology so that people can gain skills mm-hmm. in this field how was that received in terms of staff how how did staff train for these things was that was that hard it was really hard because some people could catch on because they do you know they were tech people tech yeah. savvy some, some yeah. of them very yeah. tech savvy not sharing their knowledge with the other staff <laughs> And then some of us kind of lagging behind, yeah. and there would be people that would come in that you'd have service, and maybe, you know, I might be there, and I might not know what the others knew, and mm-hmm. they were gone. <laughs> so you're out there, so you get the slap on the... <laughs> you're like, uh, I can't help you. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. But um, I think the main thing with that was all the libraries, we couldn't get everybody to stay on the same track. If they set certain rules... Yeah. Maybe one library was doing it different, mm-hmm. and then if that person would come to our library, we were trying to stick with what was you know we were supposed to, mm-hmm. and they would say, "Well, they didn't do that at the other library," <laughs> and so that went on a lot where we tried to get that straightened out with the administration. Yeah, but it was a lot of that. Yeah, uh, a lot of it. Are you enjoying your retirement? Yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> That was a quick answer. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you're doing other things knowing you. So, yes. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying your retirement. Um, you did inspire quite a few staff people that still talk about you and really enjoyed their time with you. You you left a legacy that's going to outlast us all. And I'm grateful that you agreed to come and talk with us. I hope that <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's always nice to talk to you. Thanks for listening to Tales from the Kentucky Room, a podcast brought to you by the Central Library's Kentucky Room staff at the Lexington Public Library. If you enjoyed listening, please take a minute to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. If you have any questions about local history or genealogy research, you can visit us in the Kentucky Room to use our collection and newspaper microfilm. Or you can email us at elibrarian at lexpublib.org. That's elibrarian at lexpublib.org. I'm Miriam, and we'll be back with another trip down Lexington's memory lane.